took two years to write, and it was blood, sweat and tears to chisel away at that screenplay and make it as best as we possibly could. I said, right, I want to make a Cops and Robbers movie, but it has to be set in London. It had to be dual protagonist, the cop, the criminal mastermind. And I knew that I wanted the action to be epic, inspired by films from Hong Kong action cinema that I loved. It's just about trying to take a left turn rather than a right-hand turn when you get to that point in the script and you go, what's my character going to do here? Well, the thing that I've seen them do in 101 movies is this, but what if they did that? It's about how these two guys are kind of destined to collide. Two men who have problems in their life that they have to deal with and they have to go head to head and they think they're opposites but actually they realise that they're much more alike than they thought, and they both have similar problems that they have to deal with. As the story unfolds, James McAvoy and Mark Strong both realise that there's a conspiracy going on. It becomes much more complicated and everything gets turned on its head, and they both have to learn to exist in a world that is a bit more complex than they appreciate. As much as it's a film about guys with guns running about, it's actually a really strong character piece uh, from Mark's side of things and from my side of things. Um, it's about a relationship that starts from a complete point of you know, pure animosity and, and aggression and confrontation. So trying to bring those two guys together, there's going to be some interesting things happening. Sternwood is doing it tonight. Ah, Jesus, Max, you might finally have got it. Where? Abilene Square. Are you sure? Yeah. Yeah, I'm positive. I play a character called Jacob Sternwood who is or was a very successful bank robber, um, very efficient at his job, got away with an awful lot, and was never caught until his last robbery when Detective Max Lewinsky, played by James McAvoy, manages to unmask him. He's not really a detective in terms of he doesn't sleuth much. He's a copper who chases people down and, and jumps in when he shouldn't. And he comes up against one of Britain's most wanted criminals one night and nearly gets him single-handedly and ends up being, um, in his mind, crippled. He had the opportunity to kill him, but didn't. I don't think Jacob killed Max because he didn't need to. He was a very e efficient criminal and knew the odds. Ah! In that instance, ah! it just was enough to disable him and get away. He subsequently gives up his, his life of crime and retires here to Iceland. The problem is, at the beginning of the movie, he gets a call from his son, who is evidently in trouble and has to return to London to go and find out what's wrong. And in doing so, reawakens Max Lewinsky's interest, because I think he's always hated Jacob for crippling him in the past. He gets shot in the knee. He spends the rest of the film dealing with that and dealing with the fact that as much as his perceived disability is not that bad, in his head it is. It was a psychological scar that's, that's keeping him back. When Sarah sees the opportunity to assist Max, who she's had a huge amount of respect for, she jumps at the chance. Um, and once she's really under his wing, she discovers that he's become quite stagnant and indifferent to his work for some kind of dark reason that she's not party to. Max! She has an idea of something that might have happened, but she doesn't realize quite how much it's affected him. He has an injury which she understands is debilitating, but not paralyzing. And so, feels at a loss. Well, late. In terms of motivating him. Again. Into being passionate about his job again. 